So today I'm going to be talking about how to get uh, a 16 millimeter film look, kind of like the one I did earlier for Woodland Park. Um, and just kind of like little tips and tricks that I would suggest uh, that kind of help sell the look and and uh, will help make a better video, ideally. Um, and so yeah, I'm going to be going over just like a couple tips on halation and LUTs and color um, for all you guys. and gals out there but uh the important part about this is i'm gonna this is a premiere tutorial this time and then maybe i can do a da vinci one later um i'm also gonna be talking about the camera that i use which is a uh, black magic original um, pocket cinema camera and it's got a really special like super 16 style sensor that i think gives it a, a really good flat look it can also shoot in raw and it's got uh, 13 stops of dynamic range. So all of these combined really help sell that look before you even get to the editing process. You know, it's not necessary to have a fancy Blackmagic camera or a fancy kind of uh, anything kind of camera. You know, uh, phones these days are able to shoot in log formats and, and other formats. So really, if you're able to get a camera that can shoot in log or raw, ideally, you're just going to have a, um, a bigger file that you're going to be able to work with and the colors are going to be a little more accurate and you're going to have a little more control as far as like light and exposure and stuff like that after the fact which is going to make you know of course your video look better but it's not necessary uh, on the black magic between the two different settings so you have like a the log flat look which is what we're, we want so that we can edit it and then there's the normal video look and the normal video look is kind of how um digital video looks coming out of a normal dslr um, but I have this camera rigged up to kind of look like a, uh, a digital Bolex or like a Super 8. And it works very similar to a digital Bolex or like a Bolex D16. So, we are going to be editing this footage. Which has nothing on it. I just got it today and this one's from The Gorge just a couple days ago. The first thing I'm going to do is apply our LUT. So, um, actually the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, make an adjustment layer so that we can do this really easily. And, um, so I'm just going to do that real quick, new adjustment layer. And this just allows us to apply the LUT to multiple clips without having to do it individually. And then it'll also help us when we do our little halation effect, our premiere version of the halation effect. So let's click the adjustment layer. And the first thing I want to do is use um, this LUT that I downloaded from LT Films, and I'll put the uh, link in the description so you all can try it. There's a couple other ones that are free that are really cool, and I like that as a good starting place. And then you can mess around with the look. So here we are. I'm going to pull open this LTF Super 16. And it's for log footage, which is good. That's what we have. And you can see immediately we have a lot of saturation and a lot of color. And um, sorry, just muting that real quick. And you can see that this first one really brightens up. I'll do an on and off right here. Whoa, adds a lot of color. Sometimes I like to go into the... Uh, the wheels and mess around a little bit just a little bit to bring out certain things a little more yellow or a little more blue a little more magenta but for the most part this LUT is so good that it's almost like a one-click solution most of the time so while we have this adjustment layer up I, I like to also use the adjustment layer to mess around with our crop it's not necessary of course but you know um, Unless it's super 16 or 35 millimeter, you know, the old 16 millimeter film did have a crop. So um, I'll add that now real quick. Crop effect. We're going to change our left and left and right to, let's see, maybe 13. Yeah, that looks pretty good. 
So now uh, we are going to do this little halation trick. Um, so what you can do is you can take, oh gosh. So what you should do is take all of this stuff and you're going to turn this into a nest, a nested sequence. Ding. Just like that. And that allows us to um, duplicate the footage. So I'm going to do that now. Duplicate this three times. I actually duplicate this once, my bad. So what we are going to do here is with this top footage, we are going to get the channel blur effect. Add it to the top one. And then we are going to turn up our red blurriness. And this is just a way to get that kind of film halation look. Um, and this is a little easier, I think, than doing like a whole uh, Da Vinci power grade. But I can do a video on that next time. It does have a better look, a better effect. But I feel like this gets you um, pretty far as far as the halation look without having to pull open Da Vinci and get all kinds of nodes and stuff and going crazy in that sense. So here's this. We're going to mess with the red blurriness. Let's say we put it at 40. And right now it looks kind of weird. It looks like it's a like a th old 3D movie with like the red and the blue. But um, that is just because we need to change the blending mode. And if we can change the blending mode. So if you change the blend mode to lighten, you'll notice that it's mainly just that little red glow. And we can adjust the amount till it's just a tasteful amount, an amount that we think looks good with the footage. And you can see that on and off, this just adds like that little hazy glow that you get, you can see on film that, that of course, like digital cameras don't pick up at all. Um, I can make it more subtle, make it so it's barely there. I think 20 for our sake is gonna be fine. So what I'm going to do real quick is render this and then we can go into the next step, which is going to be adding some grain and adding some film burn stuff to really sell the effect. All right, everybody. So we are back and now we're going to be adding this, uh, this little bit of grain and, and um, some... Uh, some burn transitions which are really just like icing on the cake at this point i feel like it's got a really cool color and kind of glowy vibe i don't know i think it looks cool so next uh, i'm actually going to go back into this nested sequence open it up and open this adjustment layer just push it up a level so that i can get um this grain in and so technically I'm using a 35 millimeter grain from holy grain which is also going to be in the description uh, it's free uh, and the reason I'm choosing that is just I think that it looks a little better I know like technically speaking uh, I'm like breaking some kind of rules by using like these LUTs that aren't exact film stock and these grain packs that aren't specifically for that film stock but in the end, I think what I'm really going for here is stuff that I think looks good and I think other people would enjoy. And so this is just something that I found that's free that I feel like looks good. Um, so I'm gonna put it in here. And yeah, so this is Holy Grain. It's 35 millimeter instead of 16. But like I said, I, I like it. It's a little more fine grain. It's a little less noisy. It's a little less in your face. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it in. You can see it covers everything. And that's fine because we just need to change the blending mode again. So I'm going to go over to editing, go over to blend mode. And there's a couple choices, but um, overlays, I think my favorite is the best. And, you know, YouTube will take a lot of this grain, you know, like a lot of these places like YouTube are, are going to take some of the grain and try to compress it and try to make it look better. So I always... Um, want to err on the side of making it a little more grainy because uh, by the time people are finally looking at it on their phone or their TV it's going to be compressed and so you'll lose some of that. Um, this grain clip is only a couple seconds long but that's easy to just you know copy paste a few times 
Um, so I'm going to do that real quick, make sure that we have enough. Um, and then we are going to add some, uh, uh, some of this film burn transition stuff. And these, I think, you know, you want to be tasteful with. You don't want to um, overuse it. So a film burn happens when at the beginning or end of like a actual roll of film, it can kind of get exposed to the light. And so the places you, you would see it is like, yeah, at the beginning or the end of a clip, maybe every once in a while in the middle, but overusing it is a really easy way to tell that someone's, you know, doing an emulation that's not real. Um, so let me throw one of those little guys in here real quick. Um, and these I also uh, will have a link to download. They're also all free. This whole thing is free. Um, that's the best part. We are not using any expensive plugins or any kind of silly thing like that. There's no need for real. So I'm going to toss this in and, you know, feel free to experiment with the blending modes on these um, to get what you're looking for. There's lighten. Uh, there's screen, um, overlay, oh gosh, overlay, maybe not, but, uh, I like screen a lot, and then you can mess with that opacity a little bit more. I'll bring it down, maybe. Um, and yeah, these are, to be quick, little bits of flashes that just add a little more realism to it. And I might add another one near the end. All right, and that should be it. Um, now we're looking at the final version. You can see uh, the little halation, the little LUT, and the grain working together. Um, this is really simple. Of course, you could tweak it and change it and make it look all kinds of crazy. Um, but yeah, that's about it. If you wanna, I can do another tutorial maybe on um, the DaVinci Resolve uh, method on getting good halation, getting good um, film emulation. You can also maybe do a video uh, going more in-depth on the camera setup and camera rig. But that's it for today. Thank you so much. Hope you all have a great day.